Hey guys, God has me doing a video today. Um, it is Bobby Brown, Roni. Love this song. But anyway, let's get to the lyrics and I'll get to the numbers after. Okay. All right. So the truth about a Roni, she's a sweet little girl. You can treat her right real nice and hold her tight. Only Tina Ronis can give a special love. A special kind of love that makes you feel good inside. If you believe in love and all that it can do for you, give it a chance, girl. You'll find romance. And if you find a Tenderoni that is right for you, make it official. Give her your love. My heart belongs to Tenderoni. She's my only love. She's my only love. My only heart, baby. My heart belongs to a Roni. She's my only love. She's my only love. The truth about a Roni, she's always on the phone. Talking to her homeboy, wishing they were home alone. She sends you lovely letters with the smell of sweet perfume. This is what a real Tenderoni likes to do for you. And if you believe in love... And all that it can do for you. Give it a chance, girl. You'll find romance. And if you find a tin and that is right for you, make it official. Give her your love. Yeah. My heart belongs to a Roni. She's my only love. She's my only love. My only heart. My heart belongs to a Roni. She's my only love. She's my only love. The truth about a Roni, she's a sweet old girl. About the sweetest little girl in the whole wide world. She made the toughest homeboy fall deep in love. So once you had a Roni, you would never give her up. She's a special kind of girl that makes her daddy feel proud. You know the kind of girl that stands out in crowds. Found a tender Roni and the Roni is so right. I think I'm going to love her for the rest of my life. And if you believe in love and all that it can do for you. And if you find a tender Roni that is right for you. Make it official. Give her your love. Yeah. My heart belongs to a Roni. She's my only love. She's my only love. My only heart. My heart belongs to a Roni. She's my only love. She's my only love. The truth about a Roni. She's a sweet old girl. About the sweetest little girl in the whole wide world. She made the toughest homeboy fall deep in love. So once you had a Roni, you would never give her up. She's a special kind of girl that makes her daddy feel proud. You know the kind of girl that stands out in crowds. Found a tender Roni and the Roni is all right. I think I'm going to love her for the rest of my life. My heart belongs to a Roni. She's my only love. She's, oh, my only heart. My heart belongs to a Roni. She's my only love. She's my only love. The truth about a Roni, she's a sweet old girl, about the sweetest little girl in the whole wide world. She made the toughest homeboy fall deep in love. So once you had a Roni, you would never give her up. She's a special kind of girl that stands, oh, she's a special kind of girl that makes her daddy feel proud. You know the kind of girl that stands out in crowds. Found a tender Roni and a Roni is all right. I think I'm going to love her for the rest of my life. My heart belongs to a tender Roni. She's my only love. Okay. Yeah. So these are the lyrics. It is ew, lyrics, numbers, numbers, 61, 172, 75, 313, 245, 120, 1010, 444, 215, 102, 54, 42, 118, 52, 2911. So let's say that again. You know what I'm saying? 681, 172, 75, 313. 245, 120, 1010, 444, 215, 102, 54, 42, 118, 52, 2911. Again, 681, 172, 75, 313, 245, 120, 1010, 444, 215, 102, 54, 42, 118, 52, 2911. All right, so let's get to it. So the one that I was circling was, um, it is on 245. So let's break it down. So I'm doing literally 245. And then the next one I'm going to do is 24 or 5. So 245 is the first one in the Bible. And we're looking this up on uh, BibleStudiesTools.com. Just as I saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand. And that it broke in pieces, the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. A great God has made known to the king what shall be after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation sure. So, and then that's Daniel 2.45. And let's get into... What's that all? So basically, what I'm getting from this, it also says right here, um, if I get into this one, because like he said, on Daniel 245, this is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of the mountain. Let me 
me see what time. Oh, yeah. Cut out the mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. Um, the great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true, and its interpretation is trustworthy. God is saying um, with this, if you're the type of person that has an ability that does know how to uh, give dream interpretation, um, then believe that. When God shows you and gives you revelation of the dream, believe what God is telling to you. Also, uh, if you did have a vision and it was clear and evident, it wasn't something that needs to be interpreted so intensely and so deeply. If you did have a dream and it was clear that you and your spouse is going to meet up, it's clear that you and your spouse is going to do this. It's clear that you and your spouse is about to do that. Then it's like, listen, he's saying, basically, he don't lie. And you see the part he said, the interpretation is trustworthy. Um, so yeah, believe. Believe in the vision that you have received. Believe. All right, so let's break that down a little more now. Now we're going to do 24 or 5. But yeah, just believe in that. Oh, let me just get on this part. I just want to make sure. Okay. He will receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. Also, that's what God is also saying with this. Hold on. All right, guys. So, again, to Psalms 245, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. God is saying that that's what's going to happen. A lot of y'all have been waiting to meet your spouse. And it's been such a long wait. A lot of years or a lot of months. I don't know what journey y'all are in. Some of y'all just got out of the wilderness season and you're ready to meet somebody. Um, some of y'all got out of that isolation and you're ready to talk. You're ready to meet someone. You're ready to try. A lot of y'all, after y'all got out of those bad relationships, you were done thinking about love. Thinking about anything because of the, the how bad the... Um, the attack from the enemy was with that person. The way the enemy was attacking you with this person. You feel like that's it. I don't want another person. God is saying that this person um, will respect the way that you changed for the Lord. They will respect the fact. Ooh, in the name of Jesus, they will respect the fact that you wanted to do such a thing. Be obedient to the Lord. Which makes them, uh, for the women, to have a submissive uh, part with you men of God and also for the women it's just like the men they will have a gentle spirit with you it will make you really want to respect each other and love each other in the proper way that a man and woman should of the way God wants us to and it will be something that will make you you know respect each other on a different level because it's clear that you could do this and you could do that but you rather do it in this way um so yeah a lot of y'all since y'all are tenderonies to your spouses um uh, <laughs> y'all could put that in the comments i'm a tenderoni okay because <laughs> y'all spouses they y'all are just like just very special and like he said on there, you're very special. So um, I just want to say that in the gift of this, what well, God is giving to you, vindication. A lot of y'all going to be vindicated through this. Um, all right. Like a lot of people have made you feel bad for not wanting to date. Made you feel bad of so many reasons. Like you were unlovable. Everything you can think of. And God is saying that this person, yeah. They're going to show to everybody that, yeah, I am lovable. I am worth loving. I am worth being faithful to. A lot of your exes in the past, every time that you did something, they will blame it on you and make it seem as if you deserved what they were, how they were treating you. Like, if you didn't do this, I wouldn't have looked at that girl. If you do that, I wouldn't have did this with this guy. And if you did this, I wouldn't have talked to you like this. They did it. You didn't deserve that word. You didn't deserve to be called out your name, being called every type of name in the book. 
from curse words on down to these very bad slang words for a woman. If you know what I mean. And even for a man to be called certain things, it was just wrong how they treated you. You did not deserve to be talked to like that. You did not deserve to not be taken on dates for months, years. If y'all were in these long-term relationships until y'all left these counterfeits, you did not deserve that in the name of Jesus. You did not deserve for your child. Oh, I feel in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you, God. You did not deserve for your child to be in a predicament when they had to watch you and your spouse argue. You did not have to feel, you shouldn't have to feel like it was something wrong. Like you didn't want to start it in the name of Jesus. You didn't have to feel like in a sense of the only time they want to do something is because y'all have a, um, how can I explain? You didn't have to feel like you had to stay with him because, or stay with her because y'all got a kid together. You didn't have to feel like all of these things, whoever that's about to watch this video, you didn't have to feel that you were less than. Felt like it was like they were pulling teeth and nails just to take care of y'all kid. You didn't have to feel like you were just not good enough. Like your kid wasn't good enough for that counterfeit. That comes from man or woman. In the name of Jesus, you need to hear those snickers in the background and people telling you and texting you and telling you that they are talking to this other woman. They're talking to me. I'm the side chick. I'm the side man. I'm the side. You, you didn't need to hear all that. You didn't deserve that. You didn't deserve it. Nobody deserves that. I don't care. Like if I did not do that intentionally to you, I did not deserve that stuff that you're doing to me. Right? That's what's going on here. You didn't deserve to get a Facebook text message, a Twitter or anything, Snapchat, Instagram of somebody saying, well, I'm sleeping with your man tonight. I'm sleeping with your woman tonight. You wouldn't deserve them talking about you on social media, calling you all these things, lying on you to the whole place about what you did and didn't do. You didn't deserve that. That's what the Lord is saying. A lot of y'all have some thieving exes. Uh, oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of y'all had some exes that did some foul things. You did not deserve that domestic violence. And I'm being really honest. I don't even want to get into this kind of stuff, but God is just saying, you did not deserve it. Just didn't deserve it. And that person looks at you as a tenderoni. You are special. You are more precious than anything in this world, than the way they were treating you. The only way they were, the only time you felt love when they were buying you something, some of y'all. Some of y'all didn't even get money, but some of y'all did. And that's the only, y'all didn't need to get. And another thing, they use their body on you a lot. Well, at least I did this to you in the bedroom. At least I did that. Use their body as something, as in a sense. They use their body in a bad way. It's like, if I do this and do that, she's going to, he or he or she's going to stay around. No, you didn't deserve that. You didn't deserve the witchcraft that was put on you. You didn't deserve none of it. You didn't deserve any of it. You didn't deserve your friend sleeping with your ex. I'm seeing that as well. A friend that sleep with somebody's ex. A lot of y'all already knew, but you try to believe that they wouldn't do that to you. Sleeping with that counterfeit, which is your baby mother or father, or some of y'all just an ex. Whatever that, that could have been. Uh, uh, an ex-fiance, whatever. You didn't deserve that. This person that's about to be wrong to you, or the person that's already in your life and you're a kingdom spouse, this person is going to love you deeply. All right? Let's get to 245. Um, I just wanted to say that. Wow. All right. Let's get to it. 245. Um, now we're getting into Strong's. So this one is lovely. It says right here that belonging to another. Y'all belong together. Y'all do. Y'all belong together. You will see how, you know, everything, y'all hands fit perfectly into each other. I don't care if his hand is bigger than yours. I don't care what's going on or her hands bigger. I mean, you know, everybody's hands is shaped differently in person. My hands kind of chubby in person. I don't know if y'all can notice it here, but it's kind of chubby in person. <laughs> so, Hey, and, um, I'm just saying this is that, Hey, you don't need to feel like you're trying to put a screw in the wrong, uh, a nail, a nail or a screw. And, a hole that don't fit like you know you don't need to feel like you're putting ingredients together that's not going to taste 
good because that's all you got in the house. You know, you ever did that? Like you have ingredients in the house and it's like, well, let me just hear up and whip up something. No, it's going to be applied to you. This right seasoning for your meal that you're about to eat. Whatever that is that you're going to eat, God's going to allow you to have in this season. Whatever God's going to allow you to have at your dinner table, the table that you're going to sit at around your enemies, people that from your past exes or friends or family, it's not going to be, it's not going to be this kind of thing where it's just like I said, that you got to fake it like y'all fit together. Like in the past, you used to have to hide what they were doing to you, all that abuse. If it was emotionally, mentally hide and act like y'all were compatible and y'all weren't, you don't need to do that. A lot of y'all had to do that. A lot of y'all had to lie to your family and say that they're doing this and they're doing that. And they weren't, they weren't paying for the bills. They weren't being faithful. They weren't taking care of the kids. They weren't respecting your body. They weren't doing anything good, you know, you know, and God is saying that you don't need to do that anymore. You don't need to try to fit things into things that are not going to fit. It's going to fit just like Cinderella and the shoe. It fit well. It fit well. I'm telling you, y'all belong to you. Listen, belonging to others. Foreign and strange, it says as well. A lot of y'all are, um, everybody, how can I explain? Um, I don't know why God, I feel like God's telling me to do this, but, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Foreign, right? So this can go into a lot of ways. You can have a foreign spouse in a sense of they can be, I'm just going to say they can be, um, it's going to be a lot of interracial couples coming together. Your spouse probably is Brazilian. I'm seeing Filipino. I'm seeing, um, yeah, Brazilian. I don't know why I'm saying that Brazilian, Hispanic, Filipino, some of y'all, and y'all are not Filipino or Spanish or, um, Hispanic, um, a lot of them could be French. A lot of them could be Irish. A, a lot of y'all could be Nigerian. A lot of y'all can be Jamaican. Mixing and mingling together perfectly. Okay? Perfectly. You know, it's Indians dating this race. Dating, you can be a black woman and keep on having dreams, or a black man having dreams about an Indian woman. It could be anything. All I know is, is that it's going to be a lot of interracial couples going on here. And right now, it could be some interracial couples right now that are just meeting each other. Yeah, and they're ready to ask you out. Some of your spouse is about to ask you out. Um, and this is all for different. I make videos about this sometimes because everybody's season is different. Um, and I also believe in, too, a lot of people cannot tell and comment and say, yeah, me and my spouse got together. Some people can't do that. Some people can. And some people can't. Mm-hmm. Some people cannot do that. Um, and that's just that. <laughs> For the guys that be talking on my um, social media account, is very few sometimes, but they'll tell me how they're going through and what they're going through in their um, uh, uh, in their journey. And I love that because it helps out women of God to know that we're not only alone waiting for y'all or waiting for the cue of certain things or this or that or whatever God is giving to us. So I really appreciate that. I know the other women do too. Whenever we see y'all comment, um, we need men to open their mouths just as well as women. It is very highly important. So I really appreciate y'all opening your mouth and saying whatever that's going on with y'all emotionally, mentally, or spiritually, or romantically, whatever that that is. I really do respect that. And I do respect my followers that are on here, even the women. I respect this so highly. Thank you for coming on here. Thank you for allowing God to um, let me be the person to talk to you um, and tell you what I need to tell you that God is telling me to tell you. But anyways, back to I was saying, but yeah. Um, and I didn't want to get all into that, but a lot of y'all had some really bad situations. I also want to get into 120. So let's get into that. 120 in the Bible. It says right here, 120 in the Bible. This is Matthew. It says, But after he considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to make Mary home, to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So a lot of these men um, were scared when they found out that you were their spouse. Not because you were ugly, not because you were stupid, not because you were broke, not because you were skinny, not because you were fat, 
not because you this uh, your lifestyle, not because of this, not because of your background. Some some of them now on certain things, especially when it comes to a background, if you're thinking of a sense of some people. But um, majority of them, a lot of them, when you get married, that's forever. That's a big commitment. And I've been talking to God about that a lot. Like, I've been feeling, like, fear here and there. And I've been telling devil, like, hey, like, you know, every time I feel that, I feel like it's getting overwhelming and overbearing. I'm like, no, I can't feel like this. This will cause delay in my life, which will cause delay in your life as well. Because the devil might can't change it, okay? He can't change it. Let's be honest. He just can't. But he will try to do delay. And he will try. He can't change it, but he will try to do delay. He'll try and make it seem as if it's never going to happen. And then when it does happen, he'll make you not even be happy with the promises God will give you. So I just wanted to say that much. Please um, watch yourself. Be aware of yourself. I know people say be aware of your surroundings, and that's true. But be aware of yourself as well. This is a waiting season for a lot of y'all. And um, for some of y'all that are kingdom spouses that are waiting for your spouse to ask you out, that's another thing. You know, it's all different. A lot of us are in a waiting season right now. And I just wanted to say that much, please, as you're having all these feelings inside, um, ask the Lord, like, what's this? What's that? What's going on? How can I change this? What fast I need to do? What's going on? Because I'm not feeling good. What petition? How do you want me to talk to you about how do I, how should I pray about this situation? Cause it's uncomfortable. And, um, you know, I was realizing a lot of times where I was just really stressed out about certain things that was going on with me and my kingdom spouse until God was saying like, you're all like, whoop, 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 all happy all the time. The whole time you're slowly disintegrating in, you know, the spirit. And I need you to put that back up, like light that back up, put that light lamp back on. Cause you just, you're dimming it. You know, you're allowing the devil to dim you basically. And we can't do that. You know? So you're a child of God. You don't supposed to be dark. You know, you don't supposed to be dark in the spirit like that. You don't supposed to be. And I'm just sitting there like, dang, I don't. Like, I don't supposed to have that dark energy. Like, because I'm really like, I'd be going, like, you know, it's just like, it's just not giving. And so, yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that much. It's the commitment thing. It's not that these men, and don't get me wrong, every man is different. Every woman is different. Some of them are still in the promis- um, promiscuity. I hope I said that right. Promiscuity. And uh, some of them are still, you know, gluttony over money, gluttony over food. Um, idolizing family, idolizing friends, idolizing everything before the Lord. But some of them are literally just scared of the big, huge things that come with being a kingdom spouse, getting up at two or three, because maybe one of the, you or the spouse is going through some type of spiritual warfare. If it was a witch or warlock or, um, just some type of demonic attack that is sent on your spouse, you have to pray for them or your children. It's a lot of stuff. Had to pray and intercede for other people, especially the mission that he has for y'all individually. And this is the other verse God has for me with Romans one twenty. It is for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his internal power and divine nature has been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. So God is saying the things that he is giving to you, the dreams and visions, um, people speaking life into you, strangers or people saying certain things that you already seen in visions and dreams, like certain phrases you're seeing certain things like a certain fruit or an animal that you've seen in a dream that um, has dignitation. And dig- anyway, I'm telling you, <laughs> telling you that, uh, that basically it's more so certain that you're about to meet your spouse or that your spouse is about to ask you out. So it's just like sometimes like I have family members and friends and not friends, but family members and people I've met in my life, like strangers and stuff, say stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> ain't no way how you know that <laughs> like wait a minute like have me guessing are you an angel or are you real like you like me like <laughs> but no for real i was like wow like that's crazy like, how you knew that so yeah so i just wanted to say that and then also sometimes people don't even know why they're saying stuff they're just saying it and it's because god is working through them but i just wanted to say that as well all right so let's get to the next one we're going to get to this, man. We're going to get to the bottom of this. All right. So now we're going to get to one. All right. So it says right here, mankind. It says Adam. 
So a lot of y'all about to meet your Adam. And a lot of y'all are, that already had met your Adam, your Adam is about to ask you out. And some of y'all Adams, God is telling me to say, is if you've been feeling weary to, if you're watching this, and if you've been feel, feeling weary to ask your spouse out, ask her out. It's your time. Ask her out. Some of y'all have all these fears. Your money is fine enough. You're, you're, <laughs> you're fine enough. She likes you enough. She will accept you enough. She don't care about your past. She da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? So I'm seeing all this kind of stuff. It's like every kind of reason she will accept the child that you have. She'll accept that. Stuff like that. The lifestyle. Whatever that, that you used to do, she will accept that you have changed. You know, I'm not saying accept you for you to keep doing it. She accept the fact that you want to actually and respect the fact that you want to change and go with the Lord. I'm telling you. Phyllis, Phyllis. All right, so anyway, so the next one is 1010. God been showing me that a lot. So let's get into the Bible with this one. So John, the thief comes the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. A lot of y'all, like I said, on other community posts and on here as well, a lot of y'all have fears with a lot of things. A lot of things that you keep bottled in. If you do tell, it's only to a certain degree. A lot of y'all do have people in Christ that y'all talk to. Um, it could be a, a uh, what they call that, the mother in Christ, the mother um, and the father. It's a certain mother and father kind of thing that happens with that. Um, I'm trying to say I can explain, but y'all know what I mean by that. Can't really say it how I'm, you know. Um, but a lot of y'all have um, people to really help you and mentor you, basically, and help you through this. And God is saying it's just that basically. Um, they are, it is situations happening to try to kill and steal everything. A lot of y'all are scared about y'all finances right now, how to pay the rent. There's a lot of stuff going on too. And I'm not saying focus on your promise so much. I'm saying, of course, focus on the creator. First of all, the person that made the promise. Okay. But what I'm saying is. Is that a lot of times, too, we have all these fears and stuff, which makes us be very doubtful, which I had to do a lot of repenting on because I'm like, that ain't cool. <laughs> I'm like, God, forgive me. Even with myself, when I think about a lot of stuff, I'm like, no, this ain't this. This ain't that. Uh, and you got to repent off of that because that's disrespectful to the Lord. And second of all, like I said, you're delaying yourself. You're delaying yourself. Just wanted to say that. All right, so it says right here too. Um, let's get to the next one. It is 10, 10. I don't think I ever looked at this in this one, but maybe I did. So ten ten, a counselor. So it's a counselor for strongs. Like I said, a lot of y'all, uh, y'all probably talked to the preacher anything about this whole situation a lot of y'all been doing that a lot of y'all been feeling like certain people that you've been talking to in the body of christ haven't been really so helpful and god is saying go talk to me first and and ask me to if that's the case if you're you know if you're wanting the miraculous things of me ask in different various ways for me to help you if you did want somebody to speak through someone then ask that instead of just going directly to them come to me I want to talk to you. I want to tell you some things in your ear. I want to tell you some things when you're falling asleep and getting up. Let me talk to you. I want to show you some things. Go to that beach I've been telling you. Go to the parks uh, since I've been telling you. Go to that place that you like to go to that's like um, very far from your house. But I've seen like a, for some reason right now, I'm seeing like a cliff area people usually sit on seeing a bridge, you know, seeing like a cliff area. Somebody likes to sit on at the edge a little bit, not too much, but at the edge to sit down, park their car by, stuff like in the movies, that's what I'm seeing. I don't know if anyone's in Los Angeles or certain places like that where they have it at or Florida or something, but yes, God is saying, go sit over there, your favorite place, that place under the tree, um, under the around the bushes, whatever that place is, go to the library, some of y'all. Um, take your Bible and do a little date with me, basically. He's saying, like, have a little God and daughter date, like, God and son date. Like, basically, that's 
let's go and talk. Like, basically, God is saying. Like, not like a day, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like, let's have our moment together. Let's have intimacy and understanding. Let's talk. Let me tell you some things. Because there's nothing wrong coming to prophets, and there's nothing wrong coming to the preacher, uh, the sisters and brothers in Christ. But a lot of times, God wants you to go to him. That's the first you know, God say, like, let's have a little moment together. Let's let's talk together. Let's hang out. You know, let's talk. All right. So let's get to the next one, two nine eleven. And if you feel like you're meeting the same kind of person again, because a lot of y'all are getting revealed about a lot of things, and not only that, this the situation that some of y'all are in, you feel like you're probably in the same situation. Because um, it just seems like the lack of communication or it just seems like y'all can't find time because y'all both have busy lives. If you're a keen spouse that met your spouse already, it seems like y'all just can not never make time for each other. It seems as if um, it's just a lot of things seem like it's left unsaid. It's just a lot of conversations that you wish you could have, but you just don't have the time. Maybe y'all in school, maybe you're in college, um, maybe y'all far away from each other. And maybe it's like y'all playing phone tag to talk to each other. Maybe I send a text, but you send a call. It's just like you never could really get the time. And if you do, it's the conversations on the phone are cut short. And then if y'all meet up, the conversations are, and everything is cut short. And you really don't have time to really speak. Some of y'all feel like everybody's in your ears. When y'all gonna get married? When y'all gonna get this? When y'all gonna get that? You know, some of y'all that end up um, actually being able to tell people, you're seeing that... Maybe you feel like you should never told. I'm saying a lot of stuff in the name of Jesus. God is saying is live your best life with this person, but know and learn and let me guide you on how to, you know, have privacy and have those conversations that are open. Okay, let me help you with that. All right, God is saying Jeremiah 2, 9, 11. If I have know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in a future. A lot of y'all think y'all might be breaking up with your king of spouses. I'm seeing in the spirit because you think there's nothing's going anywhere. A lot of y'all think about just actually breaking off with this person. I'm seeing God is saying, please don't do that because you just don't know how this person feels. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, and a lot of people that you have um, y'all about to meet or have already met, a lot of them didn't really have the, you know, the voice when they were a kid. A lot of time their voice were very shut off people wouldn't allow them to speak if it was at school or home they would get a, a very bad spanking some of them like a beaten if anything to even speak about anything if it was good or bad they just had to it felt like it was always this very strict looking like material um military life in their own home in their lifestyle so since they're with you and everything is more soft and everything seems so much more human it's very strange for them and God is saying, please give them some time. And for the spouses that y'all are about to meet, some of y'all, give them some time, give them some grace, and give them some mercy as well. God is saying that. Now look, so let's get to the next one that I've been seeing on here. I've been seeing um, 215. Hold on, let me just do the, hold on. It's a lot of verses God got me doing over here, but um, I'm trying to see how I'm going to do this. Um. I'm sorry, hold on. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just making sure I'm doing everything right. So, all right, so let's get to 215. I just stopped at 2911 with Jeremiah. All right, so 215. So, 215 Bible verse it says. Do. Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm going to do two of these, actually. So God said with Philippians 2.15, it says, So that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. I don't care who you are around in this season. I talk about that in my community post. I don't care who you are around. Shine. Shine bright. People in my past made me feel very bad 
um, counterfeit relationships and friendships in the past when we feel very bad for speaking of the Lord. And it's just like all the devil is trying to do is make you shut your mouth when it's supposed to be open to speak the Lord. I don't type you want you to open your mouth and just gossip and talking up and talking mean to somebody, um, somebody ready to fight them or whatever. Or talking bad on yourself, whatever that that is, being combative, whatever. You know, they rather have that, right? You know, and listen, um, Tim- Timothy two fifteen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly at handling the word of truth. So also in this time frame too. Um, you know, God will be convicting his children about certain stuff. I feel that in the spirit before he gets you with someone, before he gets you to actually be able to be courted properly with someone. If you just met your spouse or y'all about to, you know, as y'all about to get into the dating world, I'm not dating with the courting world because y'all could be literally getting to know each other as friends. Everybody's doing things differently, but either way, it's still go over courting. I don't care y'all being friends, but you actually ask her out. Like, I'm sorry. Like some people it's like, oh, I know, I know in about a, a month. Maybe yours is two months of being friendship. Maybe this one person is one month of friendship. Then y'all going to ask, then your spouse is going to ask you on your kingdom spouse. You know, everybody's different. But all at the end of the day, it's not that dating stuff. It's courting. So now we're going to do 21.5 in the Bible. And everybody's getting tired of this long preparation and stuff. It's so, it, it's, it, it's very needed. You know, all right, so let's get to that. All right, it says 21 5. It says, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. So, listen to those, those are so real. God is really serious about this. Hold on. This is the other part God been talking about about complaining and stuff. Um, a lot of us in the body of Christ. I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to, you know, convict anybody. I'm not anyone to convict, um, because I have my complaining moments. So here it is, right here. Numbers twenty one five. It says, and the people sp- uh, spank against God and against Moses. Hold on. Let me, let me read in the King James. Hold on. I don't really like all that. I want to be more. <laughs> I'm like, why is it the spank? I don't like that part. It, I mean, it's kind of like they're beating up God of the truth, but I guess in a way, but like, I don't, so that King James is not like, you know, um, I'm trying to get to the actual, everybody got their own thing, but I just feel like for me, I like my Bible tools. So it says over here, they spoke against God and against Moses and said, why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread. There is no water, and we detest this miserable food. God is saying is that y'all feel like y'all are on basically crackers and water right now. And some of y'all don't even feel like y'all even have that. Like, nothing. With the information that God is not giving to you, a lot of y'all don't even have faith to believe God will give you signs and visions and wonderful confirmations. But you have to allow God to show you that believe in him ask for faith do your fasting do your petition a lot of us in the uh, body of christ is lazy i'm being honest we are we don't want to sit there and um you know do a fast it's literally for 24 hours without eating or 12 hours without eating or three days for 12 hours out of those three days for esther fast 21 days and 12 hours out of that time frame without eating food but eating um uh, eating meat i meant to say but eating fruits For 12 hours, for 21 days, whatever God is leading you to do, do so because they are very beneficial. It's going to grow you not only closer to the Lord, but closer to whatever he has you, um, whatever he got you to do in life, whatever that it is, your purpose, whatever that that is. Not only did I did fasting for um, my promise, but I wanted to get closer to the Lord is because the only way I can believe in the promise is is I believe in the Lord. I gotta believe in him. Who he said he is in the Bible. That he will never forsake me. That he'll be there for me. That he'll provide for me. I needed 
to figure that out. And that wasn't going to be seeing the promises in five minutes because that was not on my time anyway. I don't care how many times you fast. I don't care how many times you petition. If it's not in God's appointed time, it's just not. Unless God is telling you that it's in weeks or days or months. God, I ain't saying God won't do that. God is miraculous. I don't put God in a box. But if God is not telling you specific times and dates and stuff like that, do not sit there and force it. And thinking that praying and doing all of that uh, that kind of stuff is in some kind of way. Not that you're doing it intentionally. Some people think that they fast and pray. They're not doing it intentionally. They're just naive to the point is that they think if they do that, it will bring it. And some people doing it intentionally thinking that they can kind of change God's, you know, uh, thoughts on everything. His heart on everything. It's just like, no. <laughs> you can't. No. So, you know, and when God is ready, he's ready. I don't know about y'all, but for me, I'm not getting in no marriage where I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, like SpongeBob and didn't literally be not ready. You ever watch SpongeBob? He was never ready on half of the stuff that a lot of times on those episodes, when he was ready for something, he wasn't ready for the catastrophe that was coming. He wasn't a lot of times we get so impulsive, you know, and to the point, some of us bring that into our prayer lives. And praying for something to happen right now. And some situations, they don't happen as fast. They just don't. And you know why? It's because God's preparing you. It's more special. It's more bigger than you think it is. It's more powerful to help other children of God that God wants to work through you for his glory, not for yours. Now listen, 215 Strong says to be or become light. Become a light. Okay? Become a light through this whole thing. God is saying right here with 215, as he's putting that together as well if you find your um other sisters and brothers in christ that is down help them you know um a lot of us need to carry other children of god's burdens god talk about that in on bible verses a lot of us have to help each other do this it's not only about you it's about everybody now don't get wrong don't overstimulate yourself by helping everybody every five minutes and forget to take care of yourself forget to um breathe and and uh, 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 relax and close your eyes and, and pray for yourself and eat for yourself and bathe and sleep. But I'm saying this is that, or just do your own very, you know, cool hobbies that keeps you, you know, well balanced and not deep in depression or close to it. Um, but if that is something God's leading you to, to help somebody do that, you know what I'm saying? You think it's not going to help you, but many is times when I didn't feel like doing this and doing that, it really helped me in the end, uh, end of the day. So in the long run, it helped me. So not that I was seeking for that, it was just something that happened after I was obedient enough to listen to the Lord and say, okay, God, I will help this child of God, even though I'm literally drained. Okay. And that's just real. I'm just being so honest about it. And that's just the truth. God knows you're tired. Okay. God also say, may God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. Uh, may you blow them away like smoke as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God, but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. That's Psalms 68 1. So God is saying a lot of y'all be seeing the wicked people like get their marriages, get their this, get their that. You don't know how that happened. You don't know if people getting married off of God or off of witchcraft. You don't know if a person's getting that house for that uh, from God or off of witchcraft. God is allowing it, but for his own reasons. You don't know what's going on. And God does put his son on, um, he uh, shines his son on the um, just and the unjust. He, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying he shines, uh, he put his, um, he gives gifts to the, uh, I will I rather say he gives his gifts to children of God and not if that makes any sense he blesses anyone so I'll say it like that let me make sure I have that right um on wicked and righteous yeah it says right here um Matthew 5 45 they ye may be the children of your father, which is the heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send of rain on the just and on the unjust. So I'm just saying this is that we can't we can't escape a lot of things. But I will say this as much. A lot of these things that go you go through through this waiting period is not in vain. Okay? 
And as I be saying, a lot of us, our testimonies are going to be fire. People are going to have popcorn, soda, and it's going to be a movie. And not to be on some jokey stuff, but it's going to be something that people are really going to be like, wow, ain't no way God got her out of that. Ain't no way the devil got her uh, got her in this, got him in that. And then God got him out. And they don't have, look like they don't even have nothing happen to them. Ain't no way. They still smiling. Ain't no way they still happy. Ain't no way. It also says right here. Um, it says, um, so, it says right here, 681, to lay it off, I kindle light. So, touch. It says, kindle clinging. So, kindle light. Kindle definition inspire so it also talks about the love of art and um y'all will kindle something inside of your spouse's heart the love of god your worship your the way you worship the lord the way you praise the lord it will really spike something inside of them you know it really will and a lot of them will find you more and more in who you are through Christ. So give it time. Do not rush this situation. Don't get frustrated with them. There's so many reasons why this is not happening right now. So please relax. God is saying, let things be. You will kindle a fire inside of them, which is the Holy Spirit. A fire that is inside of you will be in them seeing you. A lot of us in the body of Christ is causing our spouses um, to get closer and closer as i said some people spouses are watching them on social media watching them at certain places and they see how humble they are how good they are they keep pushing they keep pushing it says right here um god also says philippians 3 13 brothers and sisters i do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining for um, toward what is ahead. God is saying, let the past go too. Like I just said, you went through a lot. And I'm not going to go back into everything you went through. But you went through a lot, which is causing you to stay still there. And God is saying, for me to bless you, please don't delay your promises. And please, when you get your promise, do not self-sabotage it because of the past. Because of what people said, what people did, what people told you that you could be and could be. What your narcissistic family members have said, narcissistic friends, people in your exes, jobs, strangers out of nowhere calling you things, saying things, especially on social media, trolls. Whatever that that was, God is saying, keep moving. It did hurt you. I know it did. God is saying, but I am here. All right? I am here. He also says right here, with um, James 3.13, who is wise and understanding among you by his good conduct, let him show his work in the meekness of wisdom. Okay. And y'all are asking for wisdom due this time frame. Allow God to give you that. Please don't get too antsy. Please don't fall into bad habits. Please don't do that. I even find myself sometimes looking back at the past. Don't do that. God says uh, a lot of times, really, he talks about a lot. Don't do that. It also says beget again. So beget. I beget again into a new life. Um, born again. God's both time referring to God's rejuvenating and believer. Giving a supernatural new birth. If y'all been seeing babies. Hearing babies cry. A lot of things you've been seeing. Baby bibs. All that type of stuff. Pacifiers. Anything with a child. Um, a lot of y'all are... Um, a lot of y'all have spouses that are babes in Christ. A lot of y'all have a lot of that going on. So give them some time to learn of the Lord. Um, a lot of them are having a lot of idolization and other things that's causing them to not be able to completely submit to God's um, plan for them, which cause, which is about you and other things um, as well. But a lot of them are babes in Christ. And you're probably a little bit more excelled woman or man that's waiting for their spouse to actually come in their lives, just wait, you know? Because I'm telling you now, it is something special. It really is. Like, let them be new birthed. You probably be seeing your spouses in the dream having new clothing, new garments, new anything. It could be anything that's happening. 
um, you holding a baby. It could be a lot of those type of dreams. God is saying that he is trying to um, have you protect that baby, protect that promise, visions of you holding a baby. It don't even look like you or the, your spouse, um, but you're holding a baby. And, or it don't look like, it just don't look like you, especially for some of y'all that don't, that never even met your spouse in the spirit, like basically never seen them in the spirit before. Uh, if y'all never ever seen them in the spirit, God is saying is that um, a lot of y'all will just meet them, you know, then you'll know it or they'll notice, you know, y'all both will know that y'all are for each other. But God is saying, just allow that to be, let me work. Let me work. Let me change this babe of Christ to a matured uh, a child of God. And, and also let you be a vessel of God and allow God to work to you to change your child. That's a, um, change your, um, your spouse that is in the proper way, not change for your own way, but God's way, um, from being a babe in Christ. Cause we all had our moments where we didn't know it certain, let them go through things, you know, pray for them through their, you know, problems and their long sufferings, but help them out with that. Because when you get married, y'all going to have certain situations too. And nobody is here to judge each other and nobody's here to rush each other or increase certain things and then decrease certain things or pick on certain things. No, God is saying is allow me to be that. And if I am having you do it, then allow me to do that for you to help your spouse, whatever that there is. But like I said, go to God about all of this stuff. I don't talk about that enough as I used to um, when I started my channel, but go to God before you listen to this video and go to God again. I'm telling you, after you watch this video, before all that kind of stuff, of course, but just talk to the Lord, you know, and I mean that because prophets are prophets at the end of the day, but he knows the other parts. Okay. We only know so much and we are give we're giving enough to give y'all the confirmations. We're giving enough of that, but God is God. Let him do that other part with you. Have that relationship that you have. Be his friend that he said you are. A lot of y'all know y'all friends with the Lord. He done told y'all. Be, that's y'all go and y'all converse in the name of Jesus. It's a wonderful thing. So, like I said, how to do the numbers. Make sure when y'all do the numbers, really break it down. Really understand where God is telling you to go to in these Bible verses. Really break them down. Don't just be sitting there, boo, boo, boo. Really break them down. Make sure you go, for instance, like when I said the 10, uh, 102. Put 10, 2. Then put 1, 0, 2. Then put 112. Then when it goes to 444, four, four, do 44, 4. Then do 444. You know what I'm saying? You got 172, do 172. Do 172. See if it's in the strong. See if it's um, if God is telling, leading you to strong. Because sometimes he doesn't. And sometimes he does. And so you got to be careful that because the devil sometimes makes you think it's something that is not with strongs. And it's no. Go to that Bible verse first before anything. And if God in the name of Jesus is leading you to that, go there. I really feel in the spirit. A lot of people are getting confused in the name of Jesus of the numbers that they are seeing badly to the point it's so there. The confirmations are there, but they're looking in the wrong places. God in the name of Jesus, guide them, Lord, in the name of Jesus to where they need to go to. Guide them, Lord, when they're having those dreams and those interpretations that they can't understand that you're trying to tell them. So, and, and our devil and demons, I silence y'all in the name of Jesus. You monitoring spirits in the name of Jesus. All the attacks that's been going on in this ministry to my subscribers in the name of Jesus. Woo, in the name of Jesus. And it's not going to be no witchcraft in the name of Jesus on these children of God. They will be protected in the name of Jesus. They will get their confirmation. They will not have fear anymore. They will not have confusion no more. They will not have a stagnant spirit. They will not, in the name of Jesus, they will not have no doubt. They will not have no lack of faith in the name of Jesus. They will get their confirmations in the name of Jesus. Amen, in the name of Jesus. Woo, Lord. Anyway, God bless you all. I really hope this is encouraging. I really do, in the name of Jesus. And I believe it will. Amen. God bless you all.